Hello, I'm Robert, and this time I'm going to show you around the program a little bit. And this is, uh, I'm just going to show you uh, some things that to do with the way it's, it's, you can have it set out. So for instance, there's this option here that you can show all in one, or you can split the main window so you can have them separately. So that's worth knowing about. And, th and then the various other options in there, for different ways of setting it all out. You can you can zoom any window, which may not be obvious because for some reason it's disabled on the Mac. But actually, you can zoom it. You have to on the Mac. You have to go up here and go Windows, Windows and Zoom. I don't know why that is. And so, if you want to zoom the window, you do it like that. On Windows, that's that is an actual zoom icon there. So you can do that with any of the windows. And, and so, so that one is particularly good if you if you want to have the 2D bounce full screen. You can also have that as a separate window from up here, bounce 2D bounce. The 3D bounce is there. I should be easy enough to find, I think. Uh, with the 3D bounce, you, you, if you go and look at that win there, right, in the win drop menu, these are things that are specific to the particular window. So uh, if you go to a wind, uh, say the tempo dial, I think has got nothing special for it. So if you go there, it just got these things you, you can, for instance, you can minimize all except this window. So all you'll have left on the screen is the tempo dial. And then you go to win and restore all minimize, all minimize windows. And the, uh, so there are a few other things you can explore there about things you can do with the win in the win there. But they, there are a few things that are specific to some of the windows. So if you look here, there are lots of them actually. And the reason there's so many things on the 3D Bounce wind drop menu is because I can't actually put any checkboxes in it for techie reasons or buttons. On Windows, this window has various buttons and checkboxes, but I can't do that here. So they are all here instead. So you can choose whether to show the blocks or whether to show the labels. See, the numbers will now disappear whether you want the tempo dial and so on, and whether you want 2D shapes or 3D shapes. So now it's set to 3D shapes. And if you go here to 3D bounce visuals, then this is where you can, and there's those things going gray again, this is where you can, you can, you have these various presets up at the top that you can try out. So there's the drum preset, which is the one we've got, there's a conducting preset, which has got, looks a bit more like a conductor's baton uh, standard preset. There's the fast scene, which actually it makes very little difference on a modern computer, but if you've got a very old computer, then you might find that that, that gives you a somewhat faster uh, frame rate. And then there's the detailed scene, which is the one that I had it on before. And so there's lots of other things you can explore up there. But the another thing on this win menu, let's let's say for something a little bit more like six or eight with Let's say to six or eight because you've got three parts there. Now, if you go up here, then you can go and you've got this option to swap. I added this only fairly recently. You can now swap any of the parts with any of the other parts. So swap highlighted part two. So you can see which part is highlighted. It's usually the last one you edited. It's also the one that the tempo dial is shown for. And so if you click, if you click there, actually, it'll go to the next. See how that the measure beat is now highlighted. The the beat and the window, the six beats are highlighted and the tempo dial shows the tempo for the highlighted part. And again, so that one, you see, and you see here, it, exp it explains there, it shows that dotted quarter note equals 30, whereas the um, eighth note equals 90. So that, that all works out. And by the way, if you want the tempo to always show the, for instance, always show the tempo for eighth notes, you can switch it on there and you can say always show the same tempo for and choose what you want it for. For instance, quarter notes is now showing the tempo for quarter notes for you probably want it showing for eighth notes. And there you see it shows it as 90 and now it doesn't matter which part you choose. So now it always shows the 90 and then it shows that as an extra bit of information there. So you, you can choose how you want to do that. You can also show the tempi for all the other parts as well. So if I switch that on, then it shows the particular part, that, that this part 
is the dotted eighth note is 30 and the sorry the dotted, dotted quarter note is 30 and the eighth notes are shown as 90 as a little blue extra pointer there so you can do that as well uh, switch that off as well there are loads of other options like that you can find I, I don't really know what to actually talk about because people ask about different things via email so I'm just choosing really I'm just sort of following my nose and sort of showing you a few of the things in the program and then you can ask questions if you've got some other things you would like me to talk about so now this swap option which I added recently then that swap highlighted part two with the previous part one notice what happens in the main window so see how you, if I if I switch that around, then the it's put the part two here, so it's now the blue balls are playing those two beats of the bar, and it it, it it keeps the colors, but it moves the note numbers, it moves the instruments as well. So if you go to the percussions for parts, the the instrument moves as well when you do that. That's also available here as well, so you can you know swap highlighted part two, part one with part three, or part one with next part two, so part one with part three. And you can just move them around like that. So that gives a very easy way to move them. And notice how the instrument moved. So the high bongo is now playing part three. And all the properties of that part will move except for the colour, which just stays as they are. So that can be quite useful if you want them in different places in the 3D, in 3D scene or the 2D scene. Uh, so that was a feature I added just, just really quite recently. Now... What else do I want to talk about? Well, uh, you, you probably found that they're just beats, but just in case you haven't, then this lets you, yeah, let, let's talk about that. And because it'll also show you something. So this, you can actually right click on here to, 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 and you can adjust it. Now notice, because we've got it set to six, eight, right? Then this is the middle beat that I'm adjusting here. So you can see that's the middle beat. It's the, it's the dotted quarter note that I'm adjusting, as you can see here as well. Then the way I've got it set up in Bounce Metronome is that the, the parts, all the parts keep synchronized. So if you move the middle beat, you don't have to go and, and adjust all these other beats to keep them in, synchron in synchronization. Obviously, you want the, the six beats to be kept in, in time with the middle beat. So if you look at that window, so that's how it works. And you can see that because I've moved it up like that, and I made the first part a little bit shorter, then, you, then you're going to get a rhythm sound like this. And then if you move it the other way, so the timing of the beats interact with each other. It was the only way that really made sense to do it. And it's the way, it, and so now if you go to the six beats, if, so if I set this, even if I set this really, um, uh, yeah, it's now at, if I set this really even quite uneven like that. But now you go to the, uh, to the six beat part, it shows them all equally spaced in this window. So the, these things kind of interact with each other. And then if you do that, you notice how one of those beats has got really much shorter than the others. So, but it, it's all scaled by the other, the parts interact like that. So listen to what happens. And you might want to say you want to have it a little bit more like that. So, so that's that's how the timing of the beats works. And and it's the same if you do it as numbers. So this is just something to be aware of. If you try adjusting these numbers, you might think these are the actual times of that of that part, but they only they are the actual times if you set the other parts all to 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 one set all the way through, because of, because they have, because the parts have to kind of interact like this. And uh, it's on my wish list to add an option to make the parts so that they don't interact like that as an option. You could unsynchronize them, but it's actually quite techy because I've written it from the ground to be like that. It's actually quite techy to make it go the other way. And I haven't really found a very easy way to do that. So this is this is just how it is in Vance Metronome. And most users find that's what they want anyway. But uh, maybe it's it's on my wish list for the future to add an option to unsynchronize them. But it's it's not it's not possible at the moment. So, so that's how that works. Uh, anything else? And, and then you can skip beats, you can accent them, 
you use the right button to change the timings, the left button to change the volume of the beats. And you can also here, if you just click on a beat to accent it, to skip it, and you right click on it to accent it. Now notice I am using the right click, and if you use the middle button, you can adjust, you can find adjust on here. Now notice I talk a lot about left, right, and middle buttons. And uh, uh, you can do all of this, but well, you can do it all by numbers. You know, you can go here and you can set the volume of every beat as a number there. So it really is just uh, useful. And if you don't, if you don't have a mouse at all, if you, you use the keyboards only and you and you can't use or you never use a mouse, then you can still use buttons perfectly fine. And you can use a single button mouse with just one left button. But if you want the, the most flexibility of the mouse, get yourself a USB mouse, a Windows USB wireless mouse. And you can get a clickless one. So this is uh, one that I'm using at the moment. I'm just going to click it half a dozen times. Did you hear anything? You might just possibly hear a little bit, but it's really very, very quiet. And uh, so so that's the, that's you. And I was clicking that just right next to the microphone. So I was, I was clicking that and you might not have heard anything. It's, it's probably be very quiet anyway. So uh, I, I, I might actually put up a link to this one. It's by Kinobo. Uh, I'll put a link to this this particular mouse that I used. I think there's a variety of clickless ones. This one I found works very well for me anyway. So those are uh, some of the things you can do. Have, I think but want to keep this all, all short, so I think I'll stop this video now. And I guess uh, uh, this next one, I think I'll talk a little bit. I just have a short video about the MIDI instruments, and I might show you how you set up the IAC driver on the Mac. So, yes, I'll do that. I'll do a short one about the MIDI capabilities, and then I'll talk a bit about the various rhythms and things in Bounce Metronome. Let's stop this.